Hello everyone, I am Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you are interested in purchasing this book, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. Today we're going to dive deep and ask ourselves if we really have what it takes. If you've been watching my channel, I was deeply in debt at the age of 22 in the amount of $42,000. Ironically, in today's dollars, it's equivalent to $63,923, 60 of which is pretty much what I paid for this house that I am living in. When I got all my bills on the same night and added them all together, I was astonished. I turned purple with anger, not at the credit card companies or the car payment, or my student loans, but at myself. The veins were popping out of my head and I was fuming mad. I knew it was my fault, all of it. I took responsibility and the next day I got a second job. I worked from 6 a.m. until midnight, six days a week, and on the seventh day, if I couldn't get any overtime, I would go to labor ready to pick up a shift. And if that didn't work, I would literally jump into dumpsters to collect bottles and cans to recycle for money. Uh, this was all while taking care of my sick mother, but I was absolutely determined. After my roommate in my apartment stopped paying his portion of the rent, I had to break my lease and pay a fee of $2,300. And because it exceeded my $1,000 emergency fund, I had to borrow money from my mom and move back in with her for two weeks until I could pay her back from both of my paychecks and get an apartment of my own. Well, that two weeks turned into six months when my mom absolutely forbid me from leaving until I was 100% debt free. I felt that in order to honor her gift, I would do every single thing in my power to get out of debt as fast as possible. I was never home except to check on her and to sleep. I barely even ate in that year and a half. A, it, it was a total nightmare. I hated every second of it. I had pants that were in tatters and refused to buy a new pair. The bottom of my pants had shredded off and one of my pant legs was three inches shorter than the other, but I just rolled them up into high waters and I went into work as a cashier at Home Depot looking like a dork until my second job at the newspaper from 3 p.m. until midnight as a lead typist and graphic artist. Both jobs back then paid less than $12 an hour. I did honor my mother and six months later, I moved into a small one bedroom apartment it was just a mile or so away from her and I was able to quit both of those jobs in exchange for one job that paid the same as both jobs combined. I stayed in that apartment until she passed away several years later when I was 28, all the while living on almost nothing and accumulating my money and doubling up on my 401k and maxing out my Roth IRA. I never should have moved out of my mom's house because we got along so well and I was there every single day taking care of her anyway. I still mowed the lawn, I cleaned the gutters, I walked the dogs, did her grocery shopping, and I did the cleaning, did her laundry, and so on and so forth until her condition worsened. I never missed a single chemotherapy appointment. We played battleship while her body deteriorated. And when she finally passed away, I had accumulated enough money to pay off her house in cash and fix it up slowly over the years. I have always had a main job and a side hustle. I didn't have children. At first, it was because I could not afford them and I didn't have the time to start any relationships that would want to start a family. After I had time, the desire to have children had long passed. I made my choices and I am happier for it now. I worked hard all my life and I am happier for it now too. I think, no, I know my mom would be proud of me, smiling down on me from heaven. During my year and a half of hell week, <laughs> Yes, year and a half of Hell Week, I was not financially educated, so I went to the library and I picked up every single book on the subject. Every single penny-pinching book and financial advice book I could find, I would read on my breaks and my lunches, and if I had a little bit of time in between working my two jobs, I would devour a book at least once a week, and I would move on to the next one. Why did I do this? Because I knew I was stupid about money. I mean, 
look at the mess that I had gotten myself into. I knew I had to learn or I would just fail again. I didn't just read those books. I soaked them up like a sponge, every single word of it. I went to blogs and websites. This was pre-YouTube days and soaked it all up and even learned some things on my own. Technology has really helped out a lot since my days of getting out of debt. I will always talk about how great the Roku box is. I am not affiliated with Roku because they simply don't have an affiliate program, but I always give my Amazon link and make a few pennies every time somebody buys one with the link I give, but I absolutely love mine. I get better programming from that box than I ever did with cable. And I worked for a cable company. That cable company I worked for also had internet, so I know a few things about that too. For instance, in order to stream TV and movies, you only need three megabytes per second of speed, but the slowest carriers now have a minimum of eight megabytes per second, which is more than twice the speed necessary to watch TV using your internet via the Roku box. I also know that there are unadvertised slow speeds that you have to ask about on the phone with a customer service agent. They are not advertised because the company does not make a lot of money off of the slower speeds or the salesperson on the phone doesn't make a commission if you buy the slow speed or they make very, very little so they don't talk about it. Try it and it, work. it works. Just say, do you have an unadvertised slower speed? If you ask in those words, they are required to tell you. They are required to. Yes, it is true. I also learned about cheap cell phone service like Mint Mobile. How did I learn? Because I went from AT&T to Cricket, and when I switched to Cricket, the salesperson accidentally mentioned Mint Mobile being part of the AT&T network. It was completely by accident. Then I found out it was half the price of Cricket. So Cricket was half the price of AT&T, but provided AT&T service. Then Mint Mobile was half the price of Cricket, also provided by AT&T. Get it? It's less than a quarter of the price. But do you have the guts to walk into a center like that and ask those kind of difficult questions? Or is it not worth, worth saving $600 a year by having a seemingly uncomfortable conversation? Is it worth it to you to be debt free by giving up a year and a half of your life for a lifetime of freedom? Do you have grit or do you just talk about it and do nothing about it? Are you super low on money, but you absolutely refuse to go to the food bank because it's only for the needy? Trust me, you are the needy and you need it. Are you too embarrassed to fill out an online form to see if you qualify for food stamps? Or are you a person that just complains about how food is so expensive and does nothing to help yourself out? Or are you the type of person willing to give up your bacon and sausage and have toast and eggs for breakfast to save yourself $50 a month on processed meat? What are you willing to do? Do you have what it takes? Believe it or not, most do not. Most are all talk and no walk. I can tell you this with complete certainty. I am the real deal. I walk the walk and I talk the talk. I live on almost nothing and I am proud of it. No matter what, do something to be proud of. Be something, be someone, get out of debt, leave something to your family, make your family proud. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.